All right, everybody, it is Steve with Real Progressives. Have you ever gotten that feeling somebody was setting you up to fail? Have you ever thought that somebody was trying to make sure that whatever you did wasn't going to be effective? Couldn't quite put your finger on it, but you knew every time you tried to put one foot forward or one foot back, there was somebody there that was kind enough to let you know that you weren't going to succeed. That's what we get with our federal government, right? Our federal government is a complete failure right now on many levels. On many levels, our, our government just sucks, right? I mean, this is the easy narrative. It sucks. Just like your marriage may suck. Just like your kids may suck that day. Whatever. It always something about it sucking. But I want to be clear, and this is the big deal. If you starve a child and then send them to school, they're probably going to fail. They're going to probably act up. If you don't let them get enough sleep at night when they go in to listen to math, they're probably going to fuck up at school. If you starve government of resources, if you underfund programs, they're probably going to suck. They're probably going to be worthless. And if you underfund health care, for example, or you don't staff for doctors, you don't plan for the new amount of patients coming in, the program is probably going to fail. If you don't think about growth or you don't think about, you know, how many people are going to use the service? What level of service do they require? If you don't think about those sorts of things, when you go to plan your programs out, they're going to belly flop. They're going to suck. And people are going to say, see, it was always stupid to begin with. We need the private sector to save us all from this disaster of a government that we have. And, and this is the going rate. This is what you hear from everyone. And you hear this from the left. Oh, my God, we got to burn it down. We got to tear it up. We got to destroy it. You hear it from the right. Oh, my God, we got to cut funding. We got to stop funding the cesspool of a government. We got to get rid of it. Just take a look. If we ask for, hypothetically, $2 trillion to solve an education problem in America, how much funding do you think education in America will get? I'm guessing it'll be about, I don't know, half of that, if that, maybe a quarter of that. Now, you said we need $2 trillion or whatever to solve the education problem, the school system in America. But they give you one-fourth the payment. And then they say, see, we funded it and it didn't work. Once again, it failed. It was a complete and utter failure. See, socialism doesn't work. Your ideas didn't work. Oh, what are we going to do? Just keep throwing money at it? Just keep throwing your hard-earned tax dollars at it? This is a consistent measure that we use consistent and we show failure all the time and if we're not thinking it through on its face it is an absolute failure there's no question government does not meet our needs today there's no question that the programs that we have do not meet our needs now if you tell somebody welfare has never gotten people out of welfare well no shit Welfare has always been underfunded. The programs themselves have always been underfunded. And they've always been targeted to keep people at subsistence levels. Of course, they're going to fail. If you go into your IT job and your boss says, how much is it going to cost to build this new customer relationship management system? 
and you tell him, well, if we have the right research and development, the right developers, the right quality assurance analysts, and the right BAs, we could probably get it for about $5 million. And the boss goes, oh, my God, I'll give you 2.5 mil. You go, well, you're going to get 2.5 mil worth of CRM. And all of a sudden, the CRM doesn't track 100 of the key metrics that the boss really wanted. And now all of a sudden, the guy who was designing the system is the one that looks like the asshole. How come you designed a system that didn't meet our specifications? Well, thank God I kept good notes because asshole over here only gave me half the budget I needed to win. Now, I want you to think about this because some of this stuff, we always talk about modern monetary theory around here, and there's good reason for that because it's the necessary ingredient to solving many of these problems for our government and for us as a nation in, in everyday life. But let's let's not just talk about MMT for a minute. Let's talk about a, co, a, a completely planned attack and why there is no substitute for truth. If you know that underfunding these things is going to make them failures, and you go and you roll out a pilot program, and you know that that pilot program isn't going to be effective because the point of the program has to be universality. It has to be across all the states. It has to have all these other components to it. But someone like a Cory Booker decides they're going to do a job guarantee in just this little targeted area. Well, that defeats so much of what the job guarantee is intended to solve. So that pilot is going to fail. It's going to fail miserably. And what's going to happen? Let's, let's talk about this. It is always the fallback that these government programs are such failures that we have to privatize them. We have to privatize. There's no one that creates jobs like the private sector does, which is bullshit. There's no one that can provide health care and innovation like the private sector. Government is a complete failure. Look at the ACA. It was a complete failure. So naturally, government-run health care will be a complete failure. Never mind the fact that all they did was provide a handout to the private sector insurance companies and say, hey, you better insure these people. We're not going to really control how much you charge them, but do us a favor and, and go ahead and cover them all. Now, I don't know about you, but my insurance has been the worst it's ever been since the ACA. I'm literally telling you the truth. Every year I take, I look at it and I'm like, oh my God, what the hell have I got myself into? This is awful. Government run health care by the gods, Loki be damned. It's just awful. So you have to ask yourself, why is that? And again, There's two ways of doing everything. There's not three and four and 20 and 100. There's really only two ways, and it's a sliding scale. Either A, it's private, or B, it's government. Now, you can do your private any way you want. You can make it co-ops. You can do capital. You can do whatever you want, but either way, it's still private. And over here, when it's government, it's still government. Now, you can have a public-private partnership, which is that spectrum. But the truth is, is that there are really only two real options, private and public. Well, the public space is always going to be, quote-unquote, cheaper, because the government is the creator of the dollar. And because the government can pay for government services all day long till the cows come home, there's no reason not to do it. But 
even if the government is the payer of those services versus we the people. And they rely on the private sector to come up with ways of doing this. The private sector is driven to cost reductions, trying to make profit. And so they automatically start doing things that the federal government does not have to do. The race to the bottom does not have to occur in the federal government. But with growth models and the requirements of shareholders to gain shareholder value, this side of the equation must always seek a profit motive. Now, I'm not here to completely decry profits and motives and stuff like that, because I think that there are ways that various things, various incentives certainly bring about radical change. We've seen some of the most important changes happen in America, good changes, not just the bad ones. We've seen good ones happen as a result of the federal government heavily investing in something and then the private sector innovating. Government can contract out. They can do a million things. But the government is the currency issuer. And so it is ultimately the price setter. And so it can determine how best to serve our needs far greater than these guys because these guys always have this problem. They have this juxtaposition, this dual purpose serve our customers because the customer is always right and give it to them as cheaply as possible so we can make a profit. Well, I don't go shopping for where I'm going to get my knee operated on by the least cost provider. But the private sector certainly does. And so what we do, invariably, is we are told so much and so often that repeated logic, that it's, the government doesn't have any money, the government can't do this, it's all taxpayer dollars. We don't want to waste our taxpayer dollars. So this thing over here that has no means, has no requirements for your taxes per se to pay for these things, is kicked to the curb because we're afraid that we're going to waste our hard-earned tax dollars with government inefficiency, government bureaucracy, government bad, government bad, government bad. Let's send it over here to these really fine capitalists, these nice guys that always seek a profit because they'll always do it better with that profit motive coming, oh, first, ahead of your care. And we, the people, carry that water for them because we have been led to believe that it's our hard-earned tax dollar being wasted by the military, wasted by government uh, spending on welfare, wasted on inefficiencies, on the $500 hammer, the $2,000 toilet seat. We are completely consumed with the idea that corruption is taking our hard-earned tax dollar and profiting off of it. Let me tell you, people are profiting off of our ignorance, but it's not our tax dollar that's doing it. Government spends money all the time. That $750 billion it's spending on the military, that's not a tax dollar, right? We don't have the weakest military in the world. We have the strongest military in the world, right? Many times over again. Why is it that we have the greatest military in the, all the world? The armed forces are the greatest armed forces in all the world. It's a true statement. They lack for nothing when they need something 
they get it. When they need innovation, they get it. When they need a new technology, no price is too great, they get it. Why is that? I'm not, uh, this is not a moral story here. I'm not talking about the goodness or the badness of the military. I'm talking about why is it that there is money there for that and our taxes never go up to pay for it? Why is that? Because here's the thing. These bozos in office, the senators, the Congress critters, they all know that in order to keep the economy afloat, They've got to spend money into the economy, period. The one place that with the exception of a lonely band of people that no one questions is the military. Patriotism, all that good stuff. So when you think about how the government dumps money into the military... You must understand that it does so not just to make these other fat cats fat. It does it to keep the economy going. But I want you to understand something. Ivan Ivernizzi wrote a paper for Reda MMT in Italy. And this paper was about currency, getting currency, access to currency, privilege for gaining currency. And we talk about trickle-down economics in America. It's not an economic model per se, but it's what's done here. And so this privilege to currency, the government spends that money first to the small select group of major corporations, Halliburton, you name it, Lockheed Martin, all these big, huge mega companies, and then they determine where they're going to spend that money. There's your economy. The government spends these huge amounts of money into these government contracts. And then those contracts are what ultimately disperses that money into the economy. The rest of the money that goes in the economy is private debt, bank loans, etc. Now, we are a net importing nation by many billions a year over. Over 500 billion a year, we are net importers. So we're not bringing in money from exports per se, not at a net level. So when you think about this, the government has given over its power to these mega corporations and said, here, you make sure the people get the money. And so they spend billions of dollars at the highest levels. And those guys pay us pennies on the dollar from that first dollar that was spent into them. That money is stepped on like cocaine is stepped on. You know, that first batch that comes in, friggin' 100% pure, all of a sudden some dude takes some friggin' baking soda or whatever and cuts it down to 80%. Then they put some other thing, they step on it, gets it down to 50%. They keep stepping and stepping and stepping. Then you get this 25% proof. Coca paste. Go skiing in July. You know what I'm saying? Those guys right there are showing us how our government spends money, too. That first dollar is worth a full dollar. Man, they're spending it straight into these rich people's hands. And those rich people get to choose kind of what they do with that money. And they control the economy in that sense. That's your private sector at work, making jobs, creating jobs. I'm going to keep 80% of the money the government just spent to me, and I'm going to give 20% to my workers. Now the economy, you see that big, huge champagne glass that is the economy of the world. 
that little teeny flute is the rest of us and how much money we get into our little area. So when we talk about money and we talk about the private sector and we talk about trickle down, you see this huge, huge ocean of money at the top 1%, huge ocean. And this little teeny flute of money coming down for the rest of us. The vast majority of the folks are down at the bottom with nothing, man. But the rest of it's way up there. So think about this. When we advocate for privatizing, we're advocating to fill the top of that flute, that that champagne glass even fuller and let them determine how much money makes it down. And then after they take the most massive profit out of it, they pass a little bit on to their workers, who then in turn keep the economy going. What happens when the government says, we're going to flip that on its head? We're going to provide the services for the people. We're not going to make them pay for that. We're going to have government paid health care. We're going to have government paid student debt. In other words, we won't have any debt. They'll be paying for free college. We're going to have paid family and medical leave. We're going to have an infrastructure bill paid completely by the federal government. What happens then? Instead of that money being paid up here, that money is being paid down here in the lower tiers. And regular Americans are able to participate. In fact, in the global economy, regular people are able to get a hold of currency. Now, currency doesn't equal wealth. Currency equals buying power, but it doesn't equal wealth. Wealth is I've got land. I can turn this land into something. Wealth is I've got you know, a river running through it. I can do whatever. I've got gold reserves on my property. My walls are made of gold, whatever. I've got real wealth in my home. I got wealth. I own things. I can do things. Does it matter if the economy ebbs and flows? I'll be okay because I've got real reserves. It's savings. It's a host of things. <clears throat> so if you think about what I'm saying here, we purposely poison the well and make everyone believe that we have to reduce the deficit. In other words, spending on the people. We have to reduce that because, oh my God, we're going to have hyperinflation. We're going to have inflation. We're going to have all this horrible debt. Debt to whom? And they use all these scare tactics to keep that little flute really thin. And all that money keeps pooling at the top and it never quite trickles down. It never trickles down to you and I. Very, very little bit. Teeniest to tiniest bits. And then companies are saying, we can't afford your pensions. States are saying we can't afford our pensions. States are saying they can't afford to give you a Cadillac program at your job. All of these things come as a direct result of privatization. Anytime you privatize, you add a component of profit. And that profit must be made whether they serve the people or not. Anytime you have government run, who works in the government, folks? Your neighbors? The kid down the street? Your father? Your mother? Your cousins? It's we the people that work in the government. So government is not bad. Government is purposely castrated, purposely starved, purposely dehydrated. 
but it spends like a drunken sailor on the military to keep the economy afloat through the military, military Keynesianism. You have been duped and you've been carrying the water for this for a very, very long time. You've been busy telling people about your hard-earned tax dollar and shaming people for using your hard-earned tax dollar to buy food with. You've been shaming people. You've been busy worrying about whether they got crab meat on their food stamps. Worried about the little guy getting over because you think it's your hard-earned tax dollar that they're wasting. Folks, the biggest welfare queens of them all are the rich. They get the first pass at that money. Every time government spends on them, they get that money. And then they complain that we get money. So what they do is they try to eliminate the public space. Because every time they eliminate the public space... It forces us, if we want to do anything, if we want to get medical care, if we want to get, I don't know, student loan, it forces us to take on debt, debt we can't pay back, debt we're in too far in over our heads. And it's not just to go to Disney World, folks. They want us to go into debt. They don't want us, because here's the thing, a person in debt has to do things that a person not in debt doesn't have to do. A person in debt is a slave. They have no choices. They have limited freedom. They are oppressed by the need to chase a dollar. They are a wage slave. They have no choice but to work. And if you think about what I'm saying, you understand why they want us to go into private debt. Not only does it put us in a position where we're willing to work for less, but it also puts us in a position that everything we buy, we have to pay interest on to a private entity. And they sit on their yacht, sipping their Grand Marnier, smoking their Cohiba, while you're sitting there working your third job. Shit job, mind you, because they want you desperate. They want us desperate. Now, you would think that by giving free dental care and all this stuff, that the payments to these doctors from the government, which is all the government checks don't bounce, folks. You're in my checks, they bounce. I know mine do sometimes. But government checks, they don't bounce. They never bounce. So you would think that a dentist would love for the government to take on single payer dental care because the checks don't bounce. And even if the government paid 75%, which would be stupid because the government can pay whatever it needs to pay, but let's just say the government decided it was only going to pay 75% of what the 100% mark was. That is still better than the credit write-downs from people that can't pay, that don't pay. Do. So these guys have a guaranteed income now. No matter what, because we're always going to need our teeth worked on. What about health care? If you tear your knee up and you need surgery, but you can't afford it today, but the government's paying now, you can afford it. Well, number one, you're going to get healthy. You're going to get your knee fixed. But number two, do you think that the government's not going to pay the doctor? The government's going to pay. Government checks don't bounce. They don't have to send a collection agency after the government to pay the bill because the government will pay.
So this is a silly, silly situation we've got ourselves in because it's shameful. I want you to look around at your friends. How many of them think it's better that the private sector serve their needs with a profit motive while they're constantly having to slice services away, diminish care in the pursuit of profit? They have no choice, folks. Economies of scale be damned. They are going to cut costs. And what is the first thing that companies do when they cut cost? They cut jobs. Our Federal Reserve has a mandate. Price stability and full employment. Our Federal Reserve is neoliberal. Why is that? It's not because of the Rothschilds. It's because a neoliberal is going to do what a neoliberal does. And when a neoliberal is appointed by a neoliberal president, a neoliberal sets the stage to keep us begging for crumbs because if we're too easy on labor, if we're all able to pick our price, then it's going to hurt business. They're not going to be able to get us on a shoestring budget. They're going to have to pay to get help because there's going to be competition for good help. So they purposely keep a certain percentage of people unemployed through using monetary policy and raising interest rates that drive down the need for employment. Because again, what do businesses do? They try to make a profit. Now, we got two major debt bubbles coming up that are about to burst. One of them is very avoidable, and that's a student debt bubble. $1.5 trillion of student debt sitting there that most of which can't be repaid, cannot be repaid. Wages have never caught up. People that were out of work have never been able to make up that lost wage, that lost wealth. They're trapped with a freaking heavy-duty weight sitting on them that they can't shake. There's no potential to survive. And then the other side of this is business debt, with all the businesses that use their tax breaks to do stock buybacks. The reason why the government cut, <laughs> cut taxes on them to do the stock buybacks was to do the stock buybacks, because... What was happening prior to that was businesses were taking out private debt to buy back their stocks. They were going into debt to buy back their stocks. Think about this. This is another debt bubble that's ready to burst. Now remember, wealth allows you to survive downturns. Do you think the top of that champagne glass full of wealthy people gives one rat's ass about us perishing and frigging dying and frigging being destitute? Fuck no, they don't. They don't give two shits. You know, I look back at the old 70s, you know, and 80s commercials about drugs. You know, don't do drugs. It's bad. And they would do the peer pressure thing back in the day. Hey, man, here, man, take some of my weed, man. Smoke weed. Here, dude, I want you to have one of my acid. I want you to drop this tab, man. Yeah, here, open your mouth and take the goddamn tab. Blotter, man. Fucking trip your nuts off. Here, I'm forcing you to do it. Peer pressure, peer pressure. Folks, it's not the way it works. But they use this stuff, right? The government, in fact, should be the one doing these things for us. Well, government should be the one doing these things for us. But they've convinced us through peer pressure that we don't want to be living off the teat of the government. The government, it creates people that are desperately tied to the government. They're dependent on government. Talk to the rich 
who are dependent on government spending at the top. They're desperately dependent on that money being spent right there at the top. And then you got the makers and takers argument. Well, you know, they're going to be the maker. They're the creators. They're the ones that are going to do all kinds of good stuff with that money. It makes sense to get it to them. The 1%, they're innovators. Never mind the fact that the 99% will pay their electric bill on time. They'll buy loaves of bread. And think about what I'm saying here. The country isn't broke no matter what happens. And I want to be real honest here. Even if we maintain the spending on the military and everything else, we could still do everything else that we want to do. The entire progressive agenda is still at our disposal. We don't have to cut money here to afford money there. It just doesn't have to be that way. Now, should there be offsets? Are there programs that have outlived their usefulness that are being replaced with new ones? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Let's let's look. Should we tax wealthy people for the sake of taxing wealthy people because they got too damn much stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Wealth inequality in America is a horrible thing. We absolutely should wealthy tax them. <laughs> tax the wealthy. But not to pay for programs. Think about how stupid it is to tie taxing wealthy people to you and I having free health care. I want you to think about how absolutely mentally deficient that is. How absurd it is knowing what you know now. Tying Taxing the wealth. In other words, this is a gate that's a locked gate. You're like, Stinner, I need health care. God damn it, I need health care. And they're like, but dude, before we can get you health care, you got to tax the wealthy. Think about how stupid that is. It's like, If you don't do this, I'm going to shoot my own foot. If we don't tax the wealthy, you don't get, I don't get health care. You understand me? If we don't tax the wealthy, I don't get health care. And that's that. I've said my piece and that's that. Imagine the moronic people saying this stuff. Imagine how stupid you have to be to say that. You've got to be freaking dumb. Oh, yeah, man. Look, dude, before we give any of our children a right to a good future and we get rid of that student debt, we've like totally got to go after the wealthy. We totally got to go after the wealthy. We've got to tax wealth before we can cut the kids a break. Before we can cut the kids a break, we got to go after the wealth. It's the thing to do. Order of operations. Let's tax the wealth to pay for. Oh, wait. Fuck. Taxes don't pay for it. So why the fuck am I tying taxing the wealth to eliminating student debt? Because I'm my name is Big Bozo. And uh, I've been brainwashed to believe that the wealthier are the people that have to save us. And, uh, I don't know, because it'll devalue my dollar because of inflation, hyperinflation. Haven't you ever heard of Weimar Republic? This is the stupid that comes down the pipe. And you and I, we end up screwed. Green New Deal, guys, with all due respect to your climate problems, we've got to tax the wealthy. Before you're getting anything, we're going to let the planet burn up. But we got to get that wealthy tax away from them. Because first things first, think of how fucking stupid that is. Nope, guys, listen. 
before we give you paid family and medical leave to help support a dying father or mother, we tax wealth. That's just the way it is, damn it. I'm telling you right now, I feel strongly eat the rich. Eat the fucking rich. Fuck health care, man. We got to eat the rich. Now, I'm not telling you not to tax the rich. I'm telling you, don't you fucking dare tie your desire to tax the rich to me having health care. They don't care if I have health care. Do you understand? They don't give two shits if you have health care. Think about it. They care that they don't want to be taxed. It's like, you better you better do you you better pay higher taxes, man, or I'm gonna pull the trigger. I'm gonna pull the trigger, man. I don't need no free college. I don't need student debt elimination. I don't need health care, and we certainly don't need to fix the environment because, damn it, if we don't get your wealth, damn it, I'm going to shoot myself in the head because that's the kind of person I am. I always have my priorities and my order of operations straight. If taxes don't pay for spending, and they don't empirically do not pay for spending, why am I tying chasing wealth down as a barrier to giving health care to millions of people that are desperately in need of it? Think about this. The big ruse, man. This is why they privatize everything. Because they've got you utterly convinced that we've got to reduce the deficit, that we've got to reduce the national debt, which is nothing. But every dollar that's in existence that hasn't been taxed by the government. Think about what I'm saying. Why in the world can't we get out of our own way? Why in the world can we not get out of our own way? Every time you hear somebody say, how are you going to pay? Well, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and force that we're going to tax them. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think the Republicans are going to fight back for raising taxes? Did you see the Norquist pledge? Yeah, I think he did. Nor- didn't every Republican sign the Norquist pledge? Yeah, they did. So, so the Republicans have a mandate not to raise taxes by a nickel. I wonder if that dog will hunt. Because most of the Democrats are corporate bullshit artists, too, right in the middle. You've got a small band of progressives out there, and most of those progressives still are under the delusion that taxes pay for spending. So I want you to understand how severe the chasm is. We were talking the other night with Ellis about how MMT is one about how everybody out there, it's just a matter of time. We've already won the technical debate. We already know academically that we're correct. Now we've got to win the war of the minds. Have you ever seen how resistant people are to the basic change? Look, being conservative is easy. It's the easiest thing in the planet. I don't want to change. I'm not going to fight for change. I'm, I'm happy with mediocrity. It doesn't matter. I go home. I read my newspaper. I put my feet up. I kick the dog. I go swimming. I go to the kid's t-ball practice. I wake up. I do it all over. I go to church on Sunday. What's not to love? My happy little life in seven days a week is taken care of. I'm good. So if you think you've got people the majority of Americans ready to step up into this fight, you're tripping. You're tripping on a paper heart. You've got to figure this out quickly because we have another major recession looming around the corner. And it's looming around the corner because there's only so much private sector that exists, which is a joke, Because the private sector doesn't exist until the federal government funds the private sector to behave as job creators. But if we reduce the deficit, 
or sweat the debt or try and pay shit with fucking taxes, you can pretty much guarantee that we're going to go down the toilet. And there's no job guarantee in place to prevent widespread destitution in America. Now, Ellis and I spoke the other night also about how this is a global thing. The United States has exported its brand of neoliberalism. The United States has exported this vast desire for privatization. All these countries out there, Australia, the UK, you name it, have wonderful health care systems compared to the U.S. All of a sudden now they're exploring privatization. There's a major push in Canada to privatize health care. Why is that? Creating markets, neoliberalism, the same shit. These people already know they got it good. But now they're going to use marketing and campaign ads to sell them on how bad the good that they have is so that they can privatize it. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this. Because if you don't, folks, the people that actually pay attention to economics are such a small group of people. You could fit us in a thimble. The vast majority of people, fist in the air, ready to burn it down. Most people have no clue. And they don't really want a revolution. Damn it, these people can't even make it to a protest, much less a revolution. So it's going to take some brains here to make this happen. We're not going to win the war, the the bloody revolution against whoever. We've got to remember not to carry the water for the private sector to rape us and take us and diminish us and kill us for profit. That is neoliberalism, period, full stop. It's always looking for a new market. It's going down to Brazil. It's going to eat up the rainforests. It goes to Detroit, destroys their museums and their art and everything about them. It goes down to Puerto Rico, and they're going to have to have some sort of a financial steward. I mean, D.C., you name it. The race to the bottom is completely unnecessary. But it's fueled by our inability to pay attention and focus. And our zeal to go, I love Tulsi. I love so-and-so. I love so-and-so. They're the only one for me. And not knowing the stuff I just said. I'm not joking. If I had a microphone in my hand and I could walk up to most progressives. Hi, I'm Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives. Can you tell me? where money comes from, and why it's better to have government paid for this than the private sector, they go, uh. I'm not joking. I have done it personally. I just haven't had the microphone in hand. But I will do it. And there's a part of me that doesn't want to do it because I don't want to have to shame our movement for being so inept. But this is what we got. This is the team we got to go to the game with. This is who we got to go to battle with, our gang. We got to get them smarter so that they can partake in the battle. I'm not joking. Look around how many of them think about their hard-earned tax dollars paying for this stuff. I sweat you not. This is the truth. If we don't change this narrative ASAP, we're in for a world of hurting. So remember, when they talk about makers and takers and rugged individualism and not wanting to be on the government teat and all that shit, this is a old wives' tale, as they call it, passed down from the rich to the lay people. I mean, you can hear the playing spoons, sitting there going, Oh, Lord, I just keep praising my Jesus. And they got us sitting there clapping and singing songs to it. Believing that we're doing the Lord's work. 
We don't need no government health care. We don't need no government nothing. We need a master to take care of us. And this is what they've programmed us to believe, that we are beholden to rich people. Thank God for Bill Gates. Without Bill Gates, I wouldn't have Microsoft Windows. The Gates Foundation has saved us from the plague of AIDS. We are in debt to private corporations. Thank you. I mean, this is what we're getting. Across the globe, they're doing this. And our progressive movement is unfortunately complicit in it because they refuse to learn how the economic system actually works. And so they fall for the stupid lines of the wealthy and they deify the wealthy. And they think it's cool when they got t-shirts to eat the rich, hats. They've even got pom-poms to say eat the rich. Don't get me wrong. You want to eat the rich, that's fine. But they want to do it because they want to pay for programs because they don't know better. And they're recalcitrant. And they're unwilling to learn differently. They're wedged in there. They're, it's almost like they're conservative in their own ideological fashion. I'm not changing. This is how it is. It's like a religion. And that's what we're up against, folks. Beliefs standing between us and survival. Instead of it being worshiping stone gods or deities or sky gods or totems or anything else, they're worshiping wealth. Even though they hate the wealth, they're worshiping them like that's where all the money's got to come from. Yet another religion that we've been led to believe, and it's time we burn that Bible. It's time we burn that book of bullshit. And we start telling the truth about how economics works so that we can survive. Say no to privatization. Privatization is not the answer to anything. It really isn't. Privatized roads, oh, you like toll roads, do you? I mean, I can go on and on. Privatized schools, sure, how much do you want to pay when we have to raise tuition to pay for... uh, my uh, increase, I need to show growth. I need to tell my investors they're going to make a profit. Oh, we need to privatize the healthcare industry. Oh, so we got to show growth. It's always about growth. So how are we going to maximize profit? Oh, the, it, the health insurance industry made even more money this year. Think about it. Every time some jackwad says that the private sector can do better for us than the government, just remember, they're full of shit. And just remember, every person that says, eat the rich, that doesn't understand how the economic system works, is every bit as lethal as a capitalist because they're just as dumb. They're just as destructive to your health. Again, I'm not saying don't tax wealth. I'm saying don't tie taxing wealth to me having health care. Don't be stupid. And that's where we're at, folks. They've convinced you. Let's recap. They've convinced you that privatizing every service is the best way of doing things. They've convinced you it's because they waste your hard-earned tax dollars on these silly government bureaucracies that don't work. And they do that by underfunding the program so you have long lines. You They underpay the workers so they're sitting there going, next. It's not because they don't want to be there. It's because they're not paid worth a damn. And they sit there and they're like completely miserable. And you go to the unemployment office and they've got hand-me-down furniture from friggin' nice as new with pieces of masking tape on the seats to make sure you feel like a loser when you're sitting there in the unemployment office. I mean, they do all these things to mind fuck us. Every bit of this is used to make us believe that government is inept, that can't serve our needs, and that we have to privatize. Because after all, look at the glorious buildings of the private corporations. 
We need a federal job guarantee. Fuck. You know, I'm going to tell you this. Do you know how many people in the progressive movement try to tell me, oh, what are you going to do, just make work? Like, if if the private sector, if, if the capitalist doesn't value it enough to profit off of it, then it's not real work. Caring for your parents when they're dying is not real work. Well, I can tell you right now, you want to do it out of the goodness of your heart, but you still got to eat. We're at a point now where it's time that people stop being stupid assholes and start getting smart. It doesn't matter about automation. We don't want to twist the ties on a Tootsie Pop anymore. We can let automation take care of that. What we want to do is we want to serve our local communities with a living wage, with living benefits that say fuck you to the capitalists because if they screw with you, it's okay because you're going to leave and you're going to go to the job guarantee. And you're not going to be sitting there trying to find a better paying job later and say, well, I've been unemployed for the last three years on the UBI. No, you're going to say, I've been working my ass off in my local community, helping build bridges, helping do whatever. Whatever it is that your job is. And so now instead of having to explain three years of not doing anything, you're no longer hiring from an unemployed position. You're being hired as an employed person. And you've got negotiating power. And we've got a price anchor. And we've got a wage floor. And we have the ability to prevent all kinds of disasters and calamities for the regular person. It really is about high time smart people got smarter and the dumb people got up to smart levels because we are way past the point of being able to convince politicians that we're on to the game. They know we're not on to the game. They know most of the left thinks that we've got to tax wealth to afford programs. They think most of the left thinks that we've got to cut the military to be able to afford health care. I'm not joking. And they know that there will be a fight from hell if we try to cut the military. So it will delay us getting health care to never. It's a perfect cover. The neoliberals have us game, set, and match until progressives stop playing the same game as the neoliberals. And that's the lesson for tonight, my friends. Say no to privatization. Say yes to learning how the environment is going to be impacted by economic knowledge. Say yes to how medical care will be impacted by having economic knowledge. Say yes to how we find a way to cover student loans and to make college free. And yes to having jobs that serve our local communities and not the man. Say yes to learning MMT, modern monetary theory. Say yes to giving a shit about making the progressive agenda happen. Say yes to saving our planet from cataclysmic climate change. Say yes to just being a smarter person. And yes, I equate knowing MMT with equaling a smarter person. All right, I just do. Call me a snob that way. I'm okay with it. I can handle it. But it's true. It's that important. And it's time you learned it. Have a good weekend, everybody. Enjoy your day tomorrow. Please do me a favor. If you haven't seen this yet, we have a podcast. That podcast is called Macro and Cheese. You can find it at www.macro, the letter N, cheese.com we release a new podcast every saturday at 8 a.m it's available for you to download at any point in time after that but every saturday morning at 8 a.m we have a facebook page for macro and cheese as well where you can get the announcements for upcoming podcasts And you can get the link to download the podcast. We're on Spotify. We're on all kinds of stuff. We're on SoundCloud, iTunes, you name it. I think we're on like 20-some platforms. Podbean, CastBox, LastFM, Stitcher. We're on all of them. 
We need you to listen to them, to support us, because it's information that will change how you approach this cerebral revolution we need to wage. I believe it's the best podcast out there, and I say that not because of myself, but because of our guests. If you have any interest in actually making a difference, start there. I'm Steve Grumbine with Real Progressives and Macro and Cheese. Have a good night, everybody. I'm out.